Hey guys. All right, so I'm gonna show you how I recently made something um, that, that led to this bag. Um, I'll explain in just a minute. So I recently went on a trip and right before I left, and I'm like talking maybe 48 hours before I left, I saw a video by Robin Mead Art um, and I will link her, it was on Instagram and I'll link it down below and I only saw the one video where she was coloring something in with some markers, I don't know what they were by the way if you're watching this, which I doubt, but if you are, I'd love to know what those markers were um, and it gave me the idea to create my own coloring book to take with me on vacation. Now, you of course could buy a book, but I really, um, every time I try to take a big bulky art supplies with me on vacation, I always regret it. Um, this last time was no different. The one thing I loved that I brought with me was my own DIY little small coloring book. And creating that coloring book did lead to something else, which I'll share with you in this video, but I only created a quick one, really small one. This is it. And I took with me, it with me on vacation and I finished it so quickly. It turned out to be great um, on and off the plane. I colored it in um, with highlighter markers. I'll show you a little bit later the exact stuff I brought with me. But I loved it so much. My only problem with it was it was too small. Like I really wished, had wished I brought more pages with me. But I also knew I loved it and I wanted to do this again. So I came home and I've since made two, I think this is the second one of these. Now hers was accordion style, so she was pulling it out. Um, this is accordion style too, but I've taped all the pages together. And I'm gonna show you how I made this. Um, this is just black and white, and then you color it in what you could use pencil, you could use marker, you could use paint pens, crayons, whatever um, works for you. Um, but first you have to create the book. Somebody out there probably sells something like this that's not too detailed. I have these on the cover of this one. Um, these are some coloring postcards I bought in an estate sale quite a long wise, ways ago. And they're pretty and all. I would never sit and color these in because that's just for me way too detailed and frustrating and would just drive me up the wall to even try. This is much more therapeutic for me. I don't travel super well. Flying is not my favorite thing, so I, I can't sleep on planes. I tend to get sick when I do. So I need something to keep me awake and keep me occupied, keep me calm, and this is perfect. So I'm gonna show you how I made this. Now, the first thing you're gonna need is, of course, some big pieces of paper. This is, uh, let's see. about 12 by, about 12 by 18, and it's about 70 pound drawing paper. Um, you're gonna need two sheets for the book. And I always do one sheet on top of the other sheet. So depending on what pens you're using to do this with, um, I, I've been using the Ohuhu markers. They do bleed through to the bottom sheet. I also used um, a Faber-Castell pit pen, and that worked great too. But use what you have. You could use a Sharpie. Um, it's gonna, Sharpie definitely will bleed through to the back, so make sure you have something underneath. And um, don't worry about it because we're not gonna be worried about the backside. I worried about it with this first one and then later realized when I got home, yeah, I'm not worried and I'll show you why. So the first thing you're gonna do is just take your big piece of paper and you're just gonna draw some abstracted shapes enough to fill up the paper. I have this little like piece of scrap to put under the edge because you do want it to go all the way to the edge. It can be squares, it can be circles, it can be whatever speaks to you. Turn on some music and just start drawing 
with your pen. Now, the one thing you do want to do is make sure that your shapes are not too big. Um, you want them to be a shape that's going to be fun to color in and a size that's going to be fun to color in and not one that's going to drive you crazy because it's too small. At least, in, at least for me. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to fast forward through doing it and I'm going to do it twice. So you want two of these pieces of papers and I'll be right back. Okay, when you have what you think is done, go back. And for me, I just like to make sure none of the spaces are too big. but also not um, that they're not too small. Okay, once you have the one done, do it again. We need two. Okay, one more time. For the second page, I usually always use the under paper and I use these black marks from the first paper to give me a clue about where to put the lines for the next one. So. Anyway, let's do it twice.
Okay, once you have two of them, you're gonna make, we're gonna make a basic accordion book. So in order to do that, uh, first of all, I need my box cutter. Okay. So I'm gonna fold the paper in half lengthwise. Make a crease, then fold it in half the other way. Make a crease, and then fold either short end into that middle crease that you just made, lining up the edges as best as you can. Make another crease, and do the same thing on the other side. Now with all the drawing, it may be hard to see, but you can probably see it on the back how we've creased the paper. So now we're gonna take, we're gonna leave this, this whole part. We're gonna cut down the center crease from here all the way out to the end. I need my, there we go. My ruler, my straight edge. Okay, so I'm gonna find that center crease I'm going to line my straight edge up. Take an X-Acto blade and cut. Okay. So then you have this. Okay, so then you just refold it. Those of you who have been making journals for a while are familiar with this technique. And then you have a coloring book, all the start of one. So we're gonna do that to the other one. Same thing. I do have some more trips coming up, so I need more coloring books. the other way. Okay, and then cut it. Okay, so then we're gonna tape these two together to make more pages than were in the original book, but we're also gonna tape this part together, so we don't have to look at that, uh, to make it more of a book that opens up. And when I did the cover on this one, I did it in a hurry. This isn't the way you should do the cover, but I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is put double stick tape on all of these pages, including these outside ones, which will be attached to the cover. And if you're like me and you have stashes of double-sided tape from scrapbooking days, and it's not gone bad, use it. Otherwise, these days they sell it at different kinds of dollar stores all over the place. So two pieces of tapes are usually enough. And I just usually go ahead and put the tape on all of it. I don't remove the backing paper just yet.
And because we're taping it together, together, that's why I said it doesn't matter how much it goes through or not. Because we're not gonna, you're not gonna end up seeing it anyways. It doesn't matter. And this is really, I like this drawing paper. It's from Amazon. I bought a big bulk of it like quite a while ago now. Um, but it does go through with some markers. Not everything, but. Just make sure that you have a, um, like I said, a scrap piece of paper or another piece of paper or something underneath where you're working. Usually when I'm doing this, I turn on some background music or, you know, something. Okay, so this is going to go to here and that's going to be like that. So these two are going to be the outside. So on the outside, I'm going to put actually three pieces of tape to hold the cover on. And then you want to find some scrap cardstock, scrap chipboard. On the first one, I would still use that material, but I wouldn't do it the way I did it. Um, that was an old file folder. The old file folder will work. You could use just about anything. You could use product packaging. Okay, before we start taping stuff together, let's cut the cover. So for the cover, I'm gonna use an old piece of chipboard. This is actually the back of a paper pad. And the book measures like four and three quarters inches by six. So I usually cut like five by six and a quarter inches, um, two of them. is this? This is nine. Let's do it this way because yeah that's 12. Okay so let's do five. Nope. Let's do six and a quarter. Sometimes my math gets mixed up, but you know. Okay, so I'm gonna guesstimate six and a quarter. I'm gonna do six plus, I'm gonna leave a little extra right there. I'm gonna score it with my knot knife. Box cutter thing. Once you get a few scores in there, you don't really need the ruler anymore. Just keep your fingers out of the way. This is easier done with a box cutter than it is with any cutting implement you may have. Now we're gonna need two of them that are five inches. Double check the size. Yep, that's about right. I'm gonna pick two of these postcards out of this Lost Ocean postcard coloring postcard thing that I 
bought. I don't know why I bought it, but anyway. That one's cute. And again, you know, if I'm traveling around somewhere and, you know, I doubt I'm going to feel the impulse to color these in, but I guess you never know. It's awful teeny tiny. But it makes an interesting cover. But you will notice that you can't really center this very well on the chipboard. So I always cut like a quarter inch off. Yeah, that's better. Uh, that's much better. Okay. Again, with the double stick tape. So, I'm going to put double stick tape on the back of the covers. The postcards, these things. I usually put three. for assembly. Okay, first thing we're going to do is put these on the covers. And the hardest thing about the double stick tape sometimes is pulling the backing paper off. I'm not um, a perfectionist, but if you are, you're probably going to want to measure and make some registration marks or something. I just eyeball it. I don't really stick it all the way down until I get it on there. So one cover. And you could leave the covers blank, and you could, if you are taking this traveling, you could cover it with stickers from where you're going or something like that. But this works for me. Okay, now with the pages. So you want to, before you assemble the pages, make sure they're opening the same way, the two sections. Because I've done this where I've taped the whole thing together and then realized they were like this. Don't do that. So <laughs> you want to make sure they're this way. Once you have them that way, Skip over the one with a three, because we know that goes to the cover. And then start peeling off your tape. And then sticking your pages together. And then this is where you're going to stick the other book to this book. I don't care that my pages aren't perfectly folded and even. Once you have them stuck together though, if that does bug you, you can give it a trim on your paper trimmer before you put the covers on. It doesn't really bug me. And I, I'm usually like very off, so that's fine.
Now, the original artist, I saw this from on Instagram, again, whose um, Instagram will be linked down below. Um, I think, she, I didn't see much about how she created it. The video I saw was her coloring it in. Um, I later learned that I think she used India ink. Um, okay, that's kind of way off. Is that gonna bug me though? Mm, maybe. I just said I wasn't a perfectionist, didn't I? I do like the spine to be sort of lined up. It doesn't have to be perfect. Tape. More tape. Probably don't do what I just did. You're probably going to rip it if you do. I didn't, but I mean, I didn't have it stuck down very well. Okay. I do like the spine to be sort of lined up. not perfect but it's better it doesn't have to again it doesn't have to be perfect You can go back in with tape if you have edges that don't quite make it or uh, are sticking up. Uh, but you can also just go in with a glue stick. I think I ripped this just a little bit, so let's see if we can fix it. Okay, not perfect, but again, I don't need it to be. Okay, so we're gonna take our two covers and okay, do one side and then we'll do the other side. Again, just like before I just kind of eyeball it okay and then peel the tape on the other side and the easiest way is to stand them up like this I think and then you can line them up and then you have a DIY coloring book, of which I've made three of them. And I have this. So this is ba this bag is in an upcoming video. Um, and it is big enough to hold a few of these notebooks. Um, 
I have one of these in here already, but the other one I have in here, let's see, yeah, um, is this one. So I took this idea and there's such a thing out there as reverse coloring books, which are basically pages with just color blobs on them and you draw around the blobs or you draw what you see, which is an, honestly is an art therapy thing. And when I'm traveling and flying, I already said I don't like flying, so I'm usually stressed. And so I thought I'd use the same technique I did to do these, only do my own reverse coloring book. So I created with the same paper, I used watercolor paints and inks to create just a sheet full of painting marks and blobs and then I cut them up and made my own reverse coloring book which is I now have in here. Now it takes more time to do this because you have to wait for paper to, the paper to dry and stuff. Um, I just got the whole paper wet and then I started dropping paint on there. There's, you could do this any way that you like to do just abstract painting marks but it's another way to do one of these that I think is really interesting. Um, the bag also fits a couple other notebooks, including one for just for writing, if I need to do some writing. Um, when I took this one with me on vacation, I only used highlighter pens. And this bag holds all my highlighter pens plus one big, or one black pen, um, and that would be used for the um, reverse coloring book. Um, and I just took a variety of highlighter markers. Uh, this bag will roll up like this and sit next to me on the plane seat while I'm here and I'm coloring. And that works perfectly for me. So I hope this gives you an idea of something that you can do. Um, try it, I find it very relaxing and um, beneficial and I still can get something creative in when I'm traveling without bringing my whole art studio with me, which is really beyond the... Uh, scope of things I really want to be doing anymore. I like taking my art with me, but I don't want to take the whole art room. I can also fit a small watercolor journal in this bag, which I have one in here, and a small set of watercolor pans and one water brush. Um, so I have the coloring books, or if I want to do a quick sketch and painting of something, I can do that too. And this whole thing just can fit in my backpack. It's much lighter to carry on than some of the other things I've carried in the pa past long past and recent past. So anyway, think about it. Make yourself some DIY coloring books. Go give the Instagram channel um, a shout out. Show her some love. It was a great idea. And um, yeah, do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you later. Bye guys.